Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! If you were thinking of celebrating the second anniversary of the Brexit referendum tomorrow, street party maybe, or just a quiet meal, Airbus had a sobering message today. There hasn't been one from a big company quite so bleak. Quote, put simply, a no-deal scenario directly threatens Airbus's future in the UK. Airbus had said as recently as February it would keep British operations long into the future. Uh, it appears to be the talk of a Brexit no-deal that worries it. There is a particular cause for aerospace suppliers to be concerned. The potential for UK-made parts to fall outside the rules of the European Aviation Safety Agency and thus no longer certified as usable on planes flying in Europe. But Airbus is not alone in suggesting that uncertainty is a problem and that a potential no deal would be a disaster. What a difference three years makes. Back in 2015, Airbus was boasting of its place in the UK and the kinds of jobs it supports. Well, the Broughton plant employs about 6,500 people uh, and they're responsible for the wing assembly manufacture and the equipping and in a lot of cases the testing. It's not over yet, but now there's a doubt. We're going to be looking potentially at future investments across our sites, across this great country which produces great aircraft, great satellites. We have the most productive people based in the, in the UK from the whole of our European operation and we want that to continue. The UK is an important home nation for Airbus, but we have to say to the people listening that future investments will be under review. The warning raises a bigger point for the whole country. The Brexit may have its most deleterious economic effects on manufacturing regions and thus create more geographical imbalances in a country already very London-centric. The Treasury's made regional projections which agree with academic work on the topic. From this analysis, you can rank the regions most vulnerable to a Brexit shock and the North East comes top with the most to lose. The manufacturing heart of Britain, the West Midlands, comes next. Scroll through the other regions, you find the one least affected is actually London, despite financial services losing some access to the EU. Business leaders, traders in London are, are routinely, on a daily basis, dealing with markets, suppliers, customers, brokers in every country in the world. London is already that kind of hyper-global model. Whereas many other parts of the UK are not like that. They're much more Europeanized in nature, particularly places like the Midlands of England and the North of England. Over the last 20 years, what you see is that the economic interrelationships between the Midlands of England and the North of England have actually become deeper and deeper with the rest of Europe. The paradox is that sometimes regions with most to lose were most enthusiastic to leave the EU. The West Midlands voted 59% to leave, the North East 58%, meanwhile in London only 40% did. Manufacturing supply chains sprawl across regions. A factory may only sell to a UK customer, but ultimately its product is slotted into a plane, train or automobile that gets sold in Europe. Its sales are thus vulnerable to any curb on EU trade. We've obviously been looking at the implications for many, many months since the referendum and really we felt it was time to put on the table some hard facts about the true implications of this decision if it was to go the wrong way. Well, one hard Brexit supporting economist, Patrick Minford, famously said in 2016 that if we leave, it seems likely that we would mostly eliminate manufacturing, leaving mainly industries such as design marketing and high tech. But this shouldn't scare us, he said. Well, let us reflect on that possibility. I'm joined by Paul Everett from the ADS Group, a trade organisation for the companies in the UK, aerospace, defence, security and space sectors, and from Wellingborough, the Conservative MP, Peter Bone. Very good evening to you. Peter, um, uh, Paul Everett, if I can start with you, how widely are those Airbus views shared? Um, there's a universal view across industry, irrespective of the, of the industry. Um, all have exactly the same concerns. How narrowly is that about the no-deal scenario as opposed to other...? Um, so, I mean, the no-deal scenario is the one the Prime Minister put on the table back at the beginning of this process when she said that, um, you know, no, no deal was better than a bad deal. So, from an industry point of view, when we are looking to plan 
and against what you know how we base that plan you know the the sort of uh, the backstop if you like is that position so at the moment that's the only certainty we have against which we can plan now clearly we've been striving quite hard and working quite hard to find a better solution well so is, so is the government i mean let's be honest they don't want no deal in fact it's, it's it appears to be a sort of negotiating backstop um I, I just put that no, i mean so threatening to blow your foot off okay you know might well be a negotiating strategy but it is not one that fills you know, industry with a great deal of confidence. Right, right. Um, I put up some Treasury figures there. They were actually what would happen. They were provisional figures about regional effects and what would happen um, you know, if, we, if, we, if we came out without a, a deal. We were just on WTO rules. Do you buy those figures? Do you think that the effects are bigger in the more manufacturing parts of the economy? I mean, what we've seen so far, that's, that's clearly the case because the primary impact of customs arrangements and non-alignment on regulatory issues predominantly falls on heavily traded goods and goods that are, you know, in their production regularly crossing borders. And that's clearly much higher for manufacturing of all, of all kinds. I mean, my colleagues in the food and drink industry would point out all of these issues apply directly to them as well. Right. Peter Bone, we should listen to warnings from the people whose jobs, livelihoods and profits depend on these things, shouldn't we? Well, good evening. 280 days until we come out of this dreadful European U Union uh, superstate. And of course we should listen to all views. Uh, but you'd have to weigh up whether the uh, views are right or wrong. Well, they don't make these views lightly because unlike politicians, people running public companies aren't allowed just to make stuff up because they're not allowed to mislead markets and send incorrect signals to stakeholders. So we have to take it seriously because they say it, they probably mean it. Well, I, d I don't accept that because Airbus, Airbus has cried wolf before. They want, of course, us to stay in the European Union in a single market and that they are a European-based company, and it's a very political move to announce this uh, just a few days before the European Council. Uh, this is um, Project Fear number three, and only in February they, they said their long-term future is in the UK. They also said that their best-skilled workers were here. Why on earth would a com company want to damage itself by relocating when its best workers are in the UK? Well, perhaps because we're moving one of the things that makes us an advantageous place to make, to make these parts. I mean, it's their judgment, not yours. In, in the end, this just comes down to who should we believe is better talking about Airbus's future? Airbus directors and the trade body who says, by the way, everybody else thinks the same, or you and a handful of other people who for many years wanted to come out of the EU? Well, I'm not sure. I don't think that's quite right because the Economists for Free Trade have just published a report that says over the next uh, 15 years we'll be £140 billion better off by leaving the EU. And after all, Airbus doesn't just uh, do business with the UK, it imports stuff from China and, and America. And, and I think one of the ridiculous things said they were going to relocate from the UK to, to America and China. Well, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all because they're on WTO rules. Well, it may be that they've got cheaper prices or something, and we're, if you remove one advantage, they, suddenly the whole thing plays in the game. But look, you mentioned this Brexit, uh, economist for Brexit. Patrick Minford is one of those economists. In fact, I think he's one of the leading ones. He said we would mostly eliminate manufacturing if we left, if we left the EU. Exactly what is happening is, you know, with companies warning that that is what might happen, the Treasury analysis backs that up, you're all singing from the same hinge sheet. The way in which this is working is it, it hits manufacturing hardest, doesn't it? No, that's untrue. I mean, we heard all these warnings before the referendum, that manufacturing industry would go, uh, have an economic dive, unemployment would go something. up, interest rates would go up. And none of that, of course, and none of that, of course, happened. And really, this is purely a political statement ahead of a very important European Council meeting. Manufacturing is booming in this country, and of course, more uh, people are investing in this country day by day. And the future, of course, for business is outside the European Union, where 90% of business growth is going okay. to be. So there's nothing to fear from Brexit at all. And of course, the British people 
have well, decided that's what they want to do. Okay, I, w I won't pick that, but I will put that back to Paul. So, the very, crime so let me be very clear, and I think you know Peter, you know, may be unfair because Peter obviously you know doesn't deal in analysis or evidence, just assertion. So we've looked, Airbus have looked, and, and lots of companies have looked at what are the implications of there not being a deal. We've also looked at what are the implications of having uh, border checks, custom, the reimposition of, of customs, a whole range of things. And we've, you know, we've pulled together the evidence, we've analysed it, and we can see that irrespective of the type of Brexit we have, there will be an additional cost, which is why you know, mm -hmm. manufacturing is hit and that reaffirms the, the Treasury view. But also, you know, we have had to consider a no-deal Brexit because that's what people have actively discussed. Peter and his colleagues were on the House of Parliament floor over the course of the last two weeks, you know, basically making a very rabid case that the government had to have the ability not to have a deal. Now, for us, there is a council meeting next week. You know, we go back to March when a transition agreement was ag agreed. That was a great relief to industry yeah. because that gave us um, extra time to ensure that we could adapt to any, any set of conditions, any new arrangement. But that deal, that transition arrangement... Isn't is, long enough, isn't no, it? Well, it's, it's, it because because we we are, no, it doesn't exist yet. We haven't got a deal right. yet. And so that's, that, this is the issue for right. industry. Very quick, we, very quick, final remark from Peter Bone. You can, you, you, you can reply to that because it is put very, very clearly there what, you have, you, you, you know, what, what industry actually thinks of what you're saying. Well, what they're actually saying is they want certainty of what's going to happen, and I agree entirely with that. That's why it's no, that's absurd not quite that what he's saying. free <laughs> trade deal is the last quite, thing. That's... Not quite no, no, but he, No, no, he is saying that. And, and, and what would happen, of course, if we were to have a no deal? People want to know, and that's why the government's got to prepare okay. for that situation. We need to, we need I to think come we out do there. need to give certainty to Thank interest, but there is nothing to fear from coming out on world okay. trade rules. Well, and, and industry disagrees with you on that. We do need to leave it there. Thank you very much, both. Thank you very much.